Welcome to Monday Thursday worship. I invite you to have a bowl of water and a towel as part of your worship setup, as well as bread and wine or grape juice for Holy Communion. You may pause the video at this time to gather these items. As we begin, please focus your attention on the bowl and the towel. We worship today in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard Jesus call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, we confess our sin against God and our neighbor, and we enter the celebration of the great three days, reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is in 359, where charity and love prevail. We continue with the greeting and call to worship. And the call to worship is Psalm 116. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also with, with you. you. I am filled with love, for the Lord hears me. The Lord bends to my voice whenever I call. What gift can ever repay God's gift to me? I raise the cup of freedom as I call on God's name. I fulfill my vows to you, Lord, standing before your assembly. Lord, you hate to see your faithful ones die. I beg you, Lord, hear me. 
It is I, the servant you love, I, the child of your servant. You freed me from death's grip. I bring the gift of thanks as I call on your name. I fulfill my vows to you, Lord, standing before your assembly. In the coward courts of your house, within the hearts of Jerusalem. We pray. Holy God, source of all love. On the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment in our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was servant of all, your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading tonight comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. And this reading is taken from the message. Israel remembered its deliverance from slavery in Egypt by celebrating Passover. This festival featured the Passover lamb, whose blood was used as a sign to protect God's people from death. God said to Moses and Aaron while still in Egypt, this month is to be the first month of the year for you. Address the whole community of Israel. Tell them that on the 10th of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one lamb to a house. If the family is too small for a lamb, then share it with a close neighbor, depending on the number of pe persons involved. Be mindful of how much e each person will eat. Your lamb must be a healthy male, one year old. You can select it from either the sheep or the goats. Keep it penned until the 14th day of this month, and then slaughter it. The entire community of Israel will do this at dusk. Then take some of the blood and smear it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which you will eat it. You are to eat the meat roasted in the fire that night, along with bread made without yeast and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water. Make sure it's roasted. The whole animal, heads, legs, head, legs, and inner organs. Do not leave any of it until morning. If there are leftovers, burn them in the fire. And here is how you are to eat it. Be fully dressed, with your sandals on and your stick in your hand. Eat in a hurry. It is the Passover of the Lord. I will go through the land of Egypt on this night and strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, whether human or animal, and bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will serve as a sign on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No disaster will touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. This will be a memorial day for you. You will celebrate it as a festival to God down through the generations, a festival celebration to be observed always. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, you, O Lord. Lord. John 13, beginning at verse one. In John's gospel, Jesus performs the duty of a slave washing the feet of his disciples and urging them to do the same for one another. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew his hour had come to depart this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a the towel around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For Jesus knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. After he washed their feet, put on his robe and returned to the table, he said, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, 
you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jewish leadership, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. We sing our next hymn, hymn 487, What Feast of Love. Time for the children's sermon. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to read this story again, the gospel story that I read, this time from the Spark Story Bible. So if you have one of these at home, you can go get it and press pause on the video. And then when you're ready to start again, we're on page 462. 462, the Last Supper. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and he wanted to share his last Passover meal together with his closest friends, the disciples. Jesus loved his friends and wanted to show them his love in a very caring way. As the friends got ready for the meal, Jesus put water in a large bowl and knelt down on the floor. He wanted to wash the feet of each disciple. When it was Peter's turn, Peter said to Jesus, you will never wash my feet. Jesus replied, Peter, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but you will later. Peter loved Jesus so much that he said, then don't just wash my feet, but my head and hands also. Peter wanted to be as close to Jesus as possible. 
can see that, but there's, there's a picture of Jesus washing feet. As they were eating, Jesus sadly told his disciples, soon one of you will betray me. One of you will tell people who don't like me where I am so they can take me away. This upset the disciples and each one said, it's not me you're talking to, is it? When Judas said this, Jesus gently replied, yes, Judas, you will betray me. Then Jesus picked up a loaf of bread. He blessed it and gave some to each of his friends saying, take this bread and eat it. This is my body. Then Jesus picked up a cup of wine. He gave thanks and said, drink this. It is my blood, which, my, which I must give up so the sins of people may be forgiven. When the meal was over, Jesus and his friends went to a place called the Mount of Olives. Jesus said sadly, soon you will all leave me. Peter felt bad. Even if, even if all the others leave you, I won't, he said. Jesus looked at his dear friend and said quietly, before the sun rises, you will pretend you don't know me three times. Peter said, Jesus, I love you too much to ever do that to you. And all the other disciples said the same thing. So there is our story from the Spark Story Bible. Tonight is a dark night. In our worship, we hear about the last night of Jesus' life. It can be a sad, maybe even a scary thing to remember. But even when Jesus knows his life is coming to an end, he still shows his followers, his friends, and us what God's love looks like. At the Last Supper, Jesus washes his followers' feet. What an amazing thing to do, right? Because feet can be dirty, smelly things. How clean are your feet right now? <laughs> now, imagine walking around in the dust and dirt of city streets with only sandals or bare feet. How dirty would your feet be then? And yet Jesus shows his friends how they should love each other after he is gone, by washing their feet. Now, you and I can wash feet too, if we want to serve others that way, or we can do other things to show people we love them and God loves them. We can make food for people and bring it to them. We can give the clothes and toys we don't need anymore to others so they could use them. We can sit and cry with someone who is sad. We can help someone with their homework. We can play a game with someone who doesn't have a lot of friends. There are many ways we can follow Jesus' example and love people. Let's pray. Jesus, we know today and tomorrow are sad days as we remember your death on the cross. Be with us and give us courage and joy to love each other as you love us. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you. Amen. Monday, Thursday is one of the busiest nights in all of scripture. Jesus and his friends celebrate the Passover meal just like Jewish people have been doing for the past 1,200 years. And during this meal, Jesus does some strange things. He takes the role of a household slave, washing the feet of his disciples. He takes the unleavened bread of Passover, blesses it, and gives it to them, and says, this is my body. He takes the Passover wine, blesses it, and gives it to them and says, this is my blood. Jesus gives this Passover meal a whole new meaning. For us as Christians, this meal is Holy Communion, or the Eucharist, or the Lord's Supper. Jesus also gives us a new commandment. Love one another. As Jesus loves us, we are to love one another. Jesus says this, and he shows us what his love for us looks like by dying for us. After the Passover meal, they go out to the Mount of Olives, to the Garden of Gethsemane. And in this garden, Jesus prays and asks 
and begs God to find another way, to take the cup of death away from him, to not let him die. And then Judas and the temple guards show up. Judas kisses Jesus, and Jesus is arrested, taken away, and put on trial. There are many speculations as to what Jesus says in his prayer to God in that Garden of Gethsemane. The interpretation I find, find most powerful is the garden scene from the rock opera, Jesus Christ Superstar, where Jesus begs God to take this cup away. And then at the moment where he accepts God's will, he says, all right, I'll die. The screen flashes with different pictures, portraits, paintings of Jesus on the cross. It's on YouTube. I'll post a link in the comments below this service. You can watch it. In Mark's gospel, Mark tells us that Jesus is distressed and agitated in the garden, grieved, and Jesus throws himself on the ground as he begins to pray. One author I found has Jesus pray like this, Abba, Father, if my time has come, give me strength. Give me the courage not to respond to their violence with violence. If they put me on trial, give me the right words to accuse them in court. If they torture me, silence me so I don't give my friends away. They want to kill me, Father, but I don't want to die. Not yet. Not yet. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Give me time, Abba. I need time to finish the job. I still have to open the eyes of the people to announce the good news to the poor. Our little group has barely started to move. I cannot fail now. I can't. Abba, they want to silence us, to drown the voice of those who cry for justice. Let your will be done, not theirs. Don't let the powerful and bloodthirsty win, but you, God of the poor, our protector. Stretch out your hand, Father. Help us, the humble of this world, always defeated. If not, strike me from the book. Yes, I know that if a grain of wheat falls and does not fall into the soil and die, it doesn't give any fruit. I myself said it, and my spirit understood. But as my time comes, my flesh trembles. I'm scared, Abba. I'm scared. At least give me a sign. Yes, a sign, a proof that this struggle is not in vain. You gave Gideon a sign before leaving for battle. You showed Jeremiah a branch of an almond tree. Look at that branch, Lord, the branch of that tree. If that olive tree could bloom a white flower immediately as a sign, answer me, Lord, why are you silent? Am I asking too much? You asked more from me. You asked me to leave my land and my parents. I spoke for your sake. I was angry for your sake at the powerful of this world. And I shouted in the plaza and in the streets, and I did not sit with liars to eat with them. I'm alone because of you. I've lost everything. Can't you at least give me a sign? Not even that? Answer me. God, give me strength. Not their will or my will. But your will be done, Abba. Your will be done. We've all had prayers that speak to our own personal or family or community or worldwide agonies. We've all prayed God would find some other way, any other way than the way we are going. We've all asked for a sign. God, just give me a sign. If this happens, then everything will be okay. We've all prayed for strength to get through difficult times and difficult situations and difficult pandemics. 
We've all been there. Even Jesus. Even Jesus. Amen. As Hal plays this next song, I invite you to wash your hands in the water and dry them with a towel. Though there is more of one of you watching this video, wash and dry each other's hands. For the prayers, I will end each petition with the words, Hear us, O God. Your response is, Your mercy is great. United by the servant love of God in Christ, we pray this holy night for the needs of the world. You call your people to hand on what we receive from you. Form all the baptized into teachers of faith. From one generation to the next, give your church hunger for your promises in the sacrament and joy in receiving and sharing your word. Hear us, O God. Your yeah, mercy is, is great. great. Your creation provides all we need. Cleanse and protect the water you provide for washing and drinking, water on which all life depends. Sustain crops and herds that supply food. Teach us how to live so there is, is enough for all. Hear us, O God. Your yeah, mercy, mercy is, is great. great. You redeemed your people from slavery. Preserve people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Create just leadership in place of tyranny, peace in place of war. Hear us, O God. Your Hear mercy us, is great. great. Jesus loved his followers to the end. Bring your love to all who need it. People living with guilt are struggling to forgive. People lonely or overlooked. Heal the sick and embrace the dying. Hear us, O God. Your Hear mercy us, is great. great. Jesus washed the feet of the one who betrayed him. Inspire our ministries of service. May we love as Jesus loved us. Give us renewed courage to serve. Hear us, O God. Hear your mercy, mercy is great. great. O God, now receive the prayers of your people. Your glory shown in the suffering death and resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for the faithful generations who proclaimed our Lord's death. Unite us with them in hope until Jesus comes again. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear these and all our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Reading from 1 Corinthians. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Come to this meal and be fed. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, through this meal you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit. May our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. We close this service remembering Jesus is going to his arrest and we will mark his death tomorrow, Good Friday, the events from which all the mercy that fills this night flows. We close by praying Psalm 22 and reading Psalm 22 from the Psalter. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Far from my cry, my words of pain. I call by day, you do not answer. I call by night, but find no rest. You are the Holy One, enthroned, the praise of Israel. Our people trusted, they trusted you, and you rescued them. To you they cried and they were saved. They trusted and were not shamed. But I am a worm, hardly human, despised by all, mocked by the crowd. All who see me jeer at me, sneer at me, shaking their heads and saying, You relied on God, let God help you. God loves you, let God save you. But you, God, took me from the womb. You kept me safe at my mother's breast. I belong to you from the time of birth. You are my God from my mother's womb. Do not stay far off. Danger is so close. I have no other help. Wild bulls surround me. Bulls of Bashan encircle me opening their jaws against me like roaring, ravening lions. I am poured out like water. My bones are pulled apart. My heart is wax, melting within me. My throat baked and dry. My tongue stuck to my jaws. You bring me down to the dust of death. There are dogs all around me. A pack of villains corners me. They tear at my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare at me and gloat. They take what I wore. They roll dice for my clothes. Lord, do not stay far off. You, my strength, be quick to help. Save my neck from the sword. 
Save my life from the dog's teeth. Save me from the lion's jaws. Save me from the bull's horns. Do you hear me? I will proclaim your name to my people. I will praise you in the assembly. Give praise all who fear God. Revere and honor the Lord, children of Israel, people of Jacob. The Lord never scorns the afflicted, never looks away, but hears their cry. I will sing of you in the great assembly. Make good my promise before your faithful. The poor shall eat all they want. Seekers of God shall give praise, saying, May your hearts live forever. All people shall remember and turn. All races will bow to the Lord, who holds dominions over the nations. The well-fed crowd kneel before God. All destined to die bow low. My soul lives for the Lord. My children will serve, will proclaim to God to a future announcing to peoples yet unborn that God saves. And this ends our Monday, Thursday worship. Go in peace. Share the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.